Welcome everybody, in joining me, what is, and what is the, and what is Luca Palooza, the fight against time, with only 40% left on my phone, how far can I get through the chapter of Luke before time shuts off? We'll find out. <clears throat> the Chosen. See Jesus through the eyes of those he touched. I'm going to read an excerpt from there, Ed. Not every miracle was jaw-droppingly epic, but there were levels. One miracle was so low-key it would have gone undetected had Jesus not pointed it out. It happened during a private conversation between Jesus and the disciples. He asked who they thought he was. Simon Peter answered that he was the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Boom! Miracle! <laughs> Macbeth! My name is Macbeth. The Other Side of Fear by Brock Easley. Another thing Mama said is my grandpa was the groundkeeper at the eternal place for years. He made this time walk almost every day like me, but I bet he used the front gate like a somebody. <clears throat> and here we go. Luke. 
indication, dedication to Theophilus. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too was dedicated, after investigating everything carefully from the very first, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that many may know the truth concerning the many things about which have been instructed the birth of John the Baptist foretold. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abdog of 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 Abijah. His wife was the descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of, both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because, of, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in their years. Once, when he was serving as a priest before God, and his section was on his duty, <coughs> he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now, at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people were praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of the incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife... Elizabeth will hear, will bear your son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, and he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people to Israel, to the Lord their God. With the spirit of the power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and to the disobedient, to the wisdom of the righteousness, and to make ready a prepared people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you to bring you this good news. For now, because you didn't believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will be mute and unable to speak until these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at the delay of the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them to remain unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me. When he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace that endured among my people. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, the, ga the angel Gabriel had sent by God to the town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin named, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. And she was much perplexed at by his words and, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. For he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of the ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. 
Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has been conceived a son. And this on the sixth month, and her was said to be barren. And nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Mary visits Elizabeth. Then in the days Mary set out and went in haste in Judea town for the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed in a loud cry, Blessed be the woman among women, and blessed be the fruit of your womb, for why has this happened to me? that the mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaps for joy, and blessed is he who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Mary's song of praise. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God's midst favor. And I looked for favor and lowliness of his servant. Surely now and all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things among me, the holy in his name, for mercy and those who fear him for generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arms. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts and hearts. He has brought the powerful to their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with great things. He has sent the rich away empty. He has helped the servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he has made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home, the birth of John the Baptist. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were given the name Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. And they said to her, None of your relatives has that name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what the name wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And after that, all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue was freed, and he began to speak, praising the law, praising God. Fear came over all the neighbors, and all the things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who had heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. Zechariah's prophecy. For then the father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised them up a mighty Savior for, the, for us. In the house of the servant David, he has spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets of old that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of those who hate us. Thus he has shown us mercy and promise to our ancestors, and he has remembered the holy covenant, the oath he swore to the ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord and prepare his ways to give him knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercy of God, and the dawn high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and guide our feet into the way of peace. For, child, for the child grew up to become strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel, the birth of Jesus. <clears throat> in those days, a decree went out from the emperor Augustus, and in the world should be registered. And this was the first registration that was taking place when Quintus, the governor of Syara, 
all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the town of the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and a family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and to be expected a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in the hands of cloth, and they laid him in a manger, because there was no place for him to be born in the inn. The shepherds and the angels, in the region where the shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night, then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone above them, and they were terrified. For the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people, to be born this day in the city of David a Savior, whom is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. For suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest of heaven, for on earth peace among those whom he favors. <coughs> when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one, one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem. And see the thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known that, that, that they had been told about the child. And all who had heard it were amazed that the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for they had all heard and seen as it had been told to them. Jesus is named. The eight days had passed. It was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus. The name had been given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Jesus is presented in the temple when the time had come for the purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem and to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated to the Holy Lord. They offered a sacrifice, according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation in Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him in the Holy Spirit that he had not seen to the death till he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simon took him in the arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissed and your servant in peace according to your word. And my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people in Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what they was being said about them. Then Simon blessed them and said to the mother Mary, This child is to be destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel to be the sign of those who will be opposed. So the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And so a sword will pierce your own soul too. There also was a prophet, Anna, whose daughter was in the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived her husband seven years after her marriage, and then the widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer, night and day, at that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for redemption of Jerusalem. The return to Nazareth. When they had finished everything requiring the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew 
and became strong, filled with wisdom and favor of God, was upon him. The boy Jesus in the temple. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. The festival was ended and they started to return. The boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among the relatives and friends. Then they did not find him. They returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, for his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth. And he was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And then Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The proclamation of John the Baptist in the 15th year of the reign of the emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea and Herod was the ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler in the reign of oh, Itturaria and Tarchinitis and Lithuania, ruler of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Sipphorus, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went to all the region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it was written in the book of the word of the prophet of Isaiah. The voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough will be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. <clears throat> John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We are Abraham and our ancestors, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to rise up children to Abraham. For now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear here God's fruit is cut down and thrown into fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share one another that has none, and whoever has food must do likewise, for tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed to you. Soldiers asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the, as the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming, and I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. 
his witnessing fork is whatever the word is is in his hand to clear the threshing floor to gather the wheat into its granary but the chaff will burn with unquenching fire <clears throat> so with many other exhortations he proclaimed the good news to the people but Herod the ruler who had been buked by him because of Herod Jesus and his brother's wife and because all the evil things that Herod had done added to them all by shutting up John in prison. The baptism of Jesus. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized, and was praying, the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove, and the voice came out from heaven, You are my son, and beloved, with you I am well pleased. The ancestors of Jesus. Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his work. He was the son, as was thought, of Joseph, son of Hilly, son of Matthias, son of Levi, son of Malachi, son of Yenzen, son of Joseph, son of Maticus, Son of Amos, son of Nephiah, son of Israel, son of Nazareth, the son of Metha, son of Mathesis, son of Simon, son of Joseph, son of Jonah, son of Jonah, son of Bertha, son of Zebedee, son of Do son of Zabah, son of Neri, son of Malachi, son of Adai, son of Cosm, son of El, son of Er, son of Joseph, son of Alphabet, son of Joram, son of Mathat. Son of Levi, son of Simon, son of Judah, son of Joseph, son of John, son of Azrath, son of Mel, son of Minna, son of Mavica, son of Nathan, son of David, son of Jesse, son of Oban, son of Jabez, son of Saul, son of Smil, son of Amma, Dabuhab, son of Admin, son of Arnai, son of Harnad, son of Perez, son of Judea, son of Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham, son of Terah, son of Nehar, son of Sarod, son of Rach, son of Peleg, son of Eber, son of Salah, son of Kenan, son of Aphanad, son of Thehem, son of Noah, son of Fahmid, son of Methali, son of Enoch, son of Jared, son of Melchizedek, son of Canaan, son of Enoch, son of Seth, son of Adam, son of God. <clears throat> Wow. Son of Adam. Okay, the temptation of Jesus. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, then command these stones to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. <clears throat> then the devil led him up and showed him, in an instant, all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you, I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, then will all be yours. Then Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him. Only him. Then the devil took him into Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle. Of the temple. Saying to him, if you are, if you are the son of God, then throw yourself down from here. For it is written. He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and 
on their hands, they will tear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Then Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. You may be asking yourself, did Jesus just stand on top of a church thinking about throwing himself off as talking to the devil while talking to the devil? Yes, yes, he did do that. <clears throat> the beginning of the Galilean ministry. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, returned to Galilee, and the report about him spread through all of the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. The rejection of Jesus at Nazareth. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogues on the Sabbath day as was his custom, he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet of Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery to the sight of the blind, to let the oppressed go free, <clears throat> to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of the synagogue were fixed upon him, and he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled amongst your hearing. <clears throat> All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless, you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, Cure yourself, and you will say, Do hear also to your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in a prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah when the heaven was shut up. Three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all of the land. Yet Elijah yet was sent to none of them except the widow at Zephyrim and Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet of Elijah, and none of them were cleansed except in Nahum of Siren. <coughs> when they heard this, all of the synagogues were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off of a cliff. But he passed through their midst and went on his way. Blasphemy. <clears throat> the town with an unclean spirit. He went down to Capernaum in the city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on, sa on the Sabbath. They were astonished at his teaching, because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man who had been born of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, That is long, for what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. When the demon had thrown himself down before them, he came out of him without having done any harm. 
They were amazed, and they kept saying to one another, What kind of utterance is this? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out of them. And a report about him began to reach every place in the region. Healing at Simon's house. After leaving the synagogue, he entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him about her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately, she got up and began to serve them. As the sun was setting, all those who were sick with various kinds of diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on each of them and cured them. Demons also came out of many, shouting, You are the Son of God! Odd thing for a demon to say. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Messiah. Jesus preaches in the synagogues. At daybreak he departed and went into a desert place, and the crowds were looking for him. And when they reached him, they wanted to prevent him from leaving them. And he said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to other cities also. For I was sent for this purpose. So he continued proclaiming the message to the synagogues of Judea. What happened? Jesus calls the first disciples. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, Gennesaret, the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats were there, the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats that was belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deeper water, and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered him, Master, we have worked all night and have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. So they had done this, and they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and to help them. And they came and they filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that had been taken. And so also were James and John, son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon, when Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid, for now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Jesus cleanses a leper. Once when he was in one of the cities, there was a man covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he bowed and he bowed and he with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Then Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do choose. Be made clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him, and he ordered him to go and tell no one. Go, he said, and show yourself to the priest and as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing, for a testimony to them. But now, more than ever, 
the word about Jesus spread abroad. Many crowds would gather to hear him and be cured of their diseases, but he would withdraw to deserted places and pray. <clears throat> Jesus heals a paralytic. One day, while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby, and they had come to every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Just then, some men came out carrying a paralyzed man on a bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up to the roof and let him down with his bed through the middle of the tiles, through the middle of the crowd, in front of Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said, Friends, your sins are forgiven you. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, Who is this? Who can be speaking such blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God? When Jesus perceived their questioning, perceived their questionings, he answered them, Why do you raise up such questions in your heart? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, Stand up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, stand up and take your bed and go home. Immediately, he stood up before them, took what he had been laying on, he went to his home, glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. Jesus calls Levi. After this, he went out and he saw a tax collector named Levi. Sitting in the tax booth, he said to him, Follow me. And he got up, left everything, and he followed him. Then Levi gave a great banquet for him at his house, and there was a large crowd of tax collectors and others sitting at the table with them. The Pharisees and the scribes were complaining to the disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, Those who are well, they have no need for a physician. Those who are sick, I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The question about fasting. Then they said to him, John's disciples, like the disciples of the Pharisees, frequently fast and pray, but your disciples eat and drink. Jesus said to them, You cannot make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them, can you? The days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new garment and then sews it onto an old garment. Otherwise, the new will be torn and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst and will be spilled and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one, after drinking old wine, desires new wine, but says, 
The old is good. The question about the Sabbath. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and then ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful? <clears throat> On the Sabbath, Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, So the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Blasphemy! The man with a withered hand, on another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered, and the scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath, so that they might find an accusation against him, either, even though he knew what they were thinking. He said to the man who was with the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up, and he stood there. And Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath? To save a life or to destroy it? After looking around at them, he said to them, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. Jesus chooses the twelve apostles. Now, during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And the day came, he called his disciples to choose twelve of them, whom he named his apostles. Simon, who was named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphamus, and Simon, who was also, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who would become the traitor. Jesus teaches and heals. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great magnitude of people from all of Judea, Jerusalem, and the other coasts of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for the power came out from him and healed all all of them, blessing and woes. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you, on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in the day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received 
your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what your ancestors did to the false prophets. Love for enemies. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless anyone who curses you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, Offer the other one also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold from them your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others. as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. But if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do that. If you lead to those to whom you hope to receive, what credit is that? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as they as to back, but love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is the kind to be ungrateful and the wicked. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful, judging others. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you won't be condemned. Forgive, and then you will be forgiven. Give, and then it will be given to you. The a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put on your lap. For the measure you give, it will be the measure given back to you. He also told them a parable. Can a blind person guide another blind person? Will not they both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like the teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye. Or how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take that speck out of your eye, when you yourself don't see that you have a log in your own eye? You hypocrite! First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly. Then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye, a tree and its fruit. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a brattle bush. The good person, out of the good treasure of their heart, produces good, and the evil person, out of the evil treasure, produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. The two fountains. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you to do. 
I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. And then when the flood arose and the river burst out of the house, but could not shake it because it had been built well. But the one who hears and then does not act like the man who built his house on firm ground without a foundation, when the river burst against it, immediately it fell. And great was the ruin of that house. Jesus heals a centurion servant. After Jesus had finished all of his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave, look that up, whom he valued highly, and who was ill and choked and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and to heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them, but when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself. For I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but to speak the word and then let my servant be healed. For I also am a man set under authority. When soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and then he goes, and another, I tell him to come, and then he comes. And my slave, do this, and then the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. At turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. Commentary real quick. I think my understanding of the point of the story is that he's a centurion, and the faith is that he had the audacity to come to Jesus. Whatever, you're not asking for my commentary. Back to the reading. Jesus raises the widow's son at Nain. Soon afterwards, he went to the town called Nain and his disciples, and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the bear, and the bear stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. And then the dead man sat up and began to speak. And Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favorably on his people. This word about him spread throughout Judea and throughout the, country, the surrounding countryside. Messengers from John the Baptist. The disciples of John reported all the things to him. So John summoned two of the disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for someone else? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, are you the one who is to come, or are we supposed to wait for someone else? Jesus had just cured many people of diseases, plagues, and evil spirits, and given sight to many who were blind, and they answered, and he answered them, Go tell John what you have seen and heard. 
the blind have received sight, the lame have walked, the leopards are cleaned, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have given good news brought back to them, and blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed? Being shaken by the wind? <laughs> what then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who put on fine clothing and live in luxury are in royal places. And then, did you go out to see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those who are born of women, no one is greater than John, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven of God is greater than he. And all the people who had heard this, including the tax collectors, acknowledged the justice of God because they had been baptized with John's baptism. But by refusing to be baptized by him, the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected God's purpose to, for themselves. <coughs> To what then will I compare the people of this generation, and what are they like? They are like children, sitting in the marketplace, and calling to one another, We have prayed the blue for you, but you didn't dance! We wept, and you did not weep! For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say, He has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look, a glutton, and a drunkard, a friend of a tax collectors and sinners. Nevertheless, wisdom is vindicated by all of her children. A sinful woman is forgiven. One of the Pharisees asked to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house to look for a place at the table. And when a woman of the city, who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment, she stood behind him at his feet weeping and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee who invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known, he would have known and what kind of woman this was who was touching him, that she was a sinner? Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor has two debtors. One owed him 500 dabbing money, and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debts for both of them. Now which of them... <laughs> will we'll love him more. Simon answered, I suppose, the one whom he canceled the greater debt. And then Jesus said to him, Yeah, you've judged rightly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, and she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You you gave me no kiss. From But from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. And you did not anoint my head with oil, 
but she's anointed by feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which, <laughs> which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love, but the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say amongst themselves, Who is this that thinks he can forgive sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Some woman accompanies Jesus. Soon afterwards, he began on the way to the cities and the villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had gone and cured evil spirits and, infir and infirmities, infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, and Susanna, and many others who provided from them out of out of their resources. Okay. The parable of the sower. When a great crowd gathered and people from town, from town, came to him, he said in a parable, the sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed it, some fell on the path and was temporal, and the birds ate it. Some fell on a rock, and as it grew up, for the lack of moisture, some some then, then fell among the thorns, and then the thorns grew, and then they choked it. Some fell thin on the good soil, and when it grew, it produced hundredfold. And he said this. He called out, "Let anyone with ears listen." A quick intermission. Kurtek grabs out the ass. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Trinity Fellowship. Co-conspirators in crimes against the United States government. The Bible Project. They have their podcast in prison. Intermission over. Back to the story. The purpose of the parables. Then his disciples asked him, What does this parable mean? He said to them, To you. It has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to others I speak in parables, so that, looking, they may not perceive, and listening, they may not understand. The parable of the sower explained, Now all of the parable is this. The seed is the word of God, and the ones on the path who have heard and the devil comes and then takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and they may not be saved. The ones who are... Know the context of when this is being said, please. The ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But those have no roots, for they believe only for a while. And in a time, the testing, they fall away, and as for the ones that fell among the thorns, these are the ones who hear, but then they go off their own way, and they're choked by the cares of the riches and the pleasures of life, for their fruit does not mature. But as for the good soil, those are the ones who, when they hear the word, hold it fast and an honest, and they hear with a good heart, and they bear fruit with patience and endurance. A lamp under a jar. No one, after lighting a lamp, hides it under a jar or puts it under a bed, or, but they 
put it on a lampstand, so that those who may enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be disclosed, nor is anything secret that will not be that will not come to light. Uh, then pay attention to how you listen, for to those who have who have more will be given. And for those who do not have, even what they seem to have will be taken away. The true kindred of Jesus. Then his mother and his brothers came to him, but they could not reach him because of the crowd. And he was told, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. But he said to them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and who do it. Jesus calms a storm. One day, he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A windstorm swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him, and then woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are per perishing. Ugh, gross. We're dying! Okay. And he woke up and rebukes the wind and the raging. We're perishing. No one talks like that. Gross. Terrible. And he woke up and rebukes the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was a and then there was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? And they were amazed. And they said to one another, who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water? And even they obey him. Jesus heals the Jerusalem demonic. Then they arrived at the country of Oh gosh, Genesis, Jerusinus, Jerusinus, which is the opposite of Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time, he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you? What? What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, and many times it had seized him, he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him to order them to go back. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Interesting. Now, there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So, he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered into the swan, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, 
they ran off and told it into the city and the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country from of Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them. For they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. A girl restored to life and a woman healed. Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, and there they were waiting for him. Just then there came a man named Jar Jarus, a leader of the synagogue, and he fell at Jesus' feet, and he begged him to come to his house. For he had a daughter who was about 12 years old who was dying. As he went, the crowds pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hem hemorrhages for 12 years, and though she had spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure her. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his clothes, and immediately her hemorrhages, her hemorrhages stopped. Then Jesus asked, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, there are crowds surrounding you and press in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I noticed that the power had gone out from me. When the woman saw that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared in the presence of all the people she had touched him, and how she had been immediately healed. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. It's important because of the other things he could have said. While he was still speaking, someone came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any longer. Then when Jesus heard this, he replied, Do not fear. Just believe. And she will be saved. When he came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and the mother. They were all weeping and wailing for her, but he said, Do not weep, for she is not dead. She's sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand, and he called out, Child! Get up! Her spirit returned, and then she got up at once. Then he directed them and gave her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them to tell no one what had happened. The Mission of the Twelve When Jesus called the Twelve together, and gave them power and authority over the demons to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, nor bread, nor money, nor even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave 
whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. Wherever they do not welcome you, okay. as you are leaving that town, shake off the dust from your feet as your testimony against them. Different verse. They departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. Herod's perplexity. Now Herod the ruler heard all about him, what had been taking place, for he was perplexed because it had said by some that John had been raised from the dead. By the way, John's dead. But some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the ancient prophets had arisen. Herod said, but Herod, but Herod said, John, I beheaded, but who is this about whom I hear such things? And he tried to see, feeding the five thousand. On their return, the apostles told Jesus all they had done. He took them with him and withdrew privately to the city called Bethsaida. Bethsaida? Beth okay. When the crowds found out about it, they followed him, and he welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be healed, by the which by which the kingdom of God is now. There, here. They, the day was drawing to a close, and the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away, so that they may go to the surrounding villages and the countryside to lodge and get provisions, for we are here in a deserted place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish. Unless we are to go and then buy food for all these people, for there were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, Make them sit down in groups of about 50 each. And then they did so. Apparently, that's supposed to be a military thing. And made them 50s, whatever. And taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked. Up to heaven, and blessed and broke them, and gave them to his disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were filled. What was left over was gathered up. Twelve baskets of broken pieces. Peter's declaration about Jesus. Once when Jesus was praying alone with only the disciples near him, he asked them, who do the crowds say that I am? They answered him, John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, that one of the ancient prophets has arisen. But he said to them, but who do you say? But who, who do you say that I am? Peter answered, "The Savior of God." Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. He sternly ordered and commanded them not to tell anyone, saying, The Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, but then on the third day be raised. And he said to them all, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and then take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, but those who lose their life for my sake will save it. What does it profit, what does it profit them if they gain the whole world, but they lose, but lose or forfeit themselves? 
those who are ashamed of me, in my words, of them the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. The transfiguration. Now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took after him Peter and John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. And his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking with them. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which, when he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem, now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. And since they had stayed awake, they saw in his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving, when Peter said to Jesus, Master, is it good for us to be here? Do you, do you want us to make three dwellings? <clears throat> one for you, uh, one for Moses, and, and, and one for Elijah? Not knowing what he said, while he was saying this, a cloud came down and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered into the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice saying, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. Then the voice had spoken. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent. And in those days told no one, about any of the things that they'd seen. Jesus heals a boy with a demon. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met them. Just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is only a child. Suddenly, a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks and convulses him till he foams the mouth and mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they couldn't. Then Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him onto the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astonished at the greatness of God. Jesus again foretells his death. While everyone was amazed at all that he was doing, he said to his disciples, let the words sink into your ears. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands. But they did not understand this saying. Its meaning was concealed from them, so that they could not perceive it. And they were afraid to ask him what he was saying. True Greatness an argument arose among them, to which one of them was the greatest. But Jesus, they were likely teenagers, but Jesus, a good portion of them, because of the trade, you can tell by the age, look it up. But Jesus, aware of their inner thoughts, took a little child and put it by his side. And he said to them, whoever welcomes this child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. For the least among you is the greatest. Another exorcist, John answered, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, 
and we try to stop him because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to him, don't stop him, for whoever is not against you is for you. A Samaritan village refuses to receive Jesus. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, he entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. You hear that frog? When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven to consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to the next village. Would-be followers of Jesus. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those in my house. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The mission of the 70. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of them in pairs of every town to a place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See that I am sending out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no bag, no purse, no sandals, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in that same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about house from house. Whenever you enter a town and where its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick, whom are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come nearer to you. But Whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into the streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. You know, yet know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, on that day, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and for that town. Woes to the unrepressant, to the un, unrepressed, unrepentant towns. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. And for your deeds of power done in you have been done in Tyre and Sidon. They would have repented long ago, sitting in the sackcloth and ashes but in judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, 
you will be brought down to Hades. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The return of the seventy. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Jesus rejoices. At the same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and you have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and so no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then, turning to his disciples, Jesus said to them privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desire to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but didn't hear it. The Peril of the Good Samaritan Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to them, what's written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to them, you have given the right answer. Do that, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who are my neighbors? <coughs> Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest who was going down that road, and then when he saw him, he passed by him on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place, he saw him, and then he passed by him on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near to him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them, and he put him on his end, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. And when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Now, which of these three do you think was the good neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, The one who showed mercy? And Jesus said to him, Go and do like 
like that. Jesus visits Martha and Mary. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed her into, into her home. When she had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care 